Hi, and thanks for having me. I'm so glad you are all here, and I can't wait to, to hear you guys play for me uh, and talk about this, this really great music. So why don't we just dive right in? with um, Britain, the country mom.
Um, cool. So I'm probably going to say a lot of words to you. Um, right. <laughs> throw it all at you at once. Um, first of all, wonderful playing. Um, and a lot of it is, is there. I don't have you know too much to say. I feel like you have the nuts and bolts. Um, so going back to the canto primo, um, I was working a little bit on this suite with someone the other day, and, and it got me you know thinking, because mostly I've worked on the third suite, but I find there's a lot of similarity in all three of them. Um, there's a lot of like polyphony, and, and it's kind of very intertwined, very dense, very close dissonances, a lot of sevenths and minor seconds and major seconds. Um, and for me, in these pieces in particular, uh, there's a lot of character. There are different characters. Um, and I think, you know, I hear this in the third, but also in this one as well. Sometimes these voices are traveling together in parallel motion. Sometimes we're talking perpendicular. Sometimes one is speaking over the other. Um, sometimes they are waiting. <laughs> you know, so thinking of this and really any music you play, um, like what words would you give it? What if it had a text, um, if you were singing it? I think that that's, that's like really the number one thing because you have the notes and and everything is there like technically. Um, so now it's about kind of giving it, you know, bringing it to life a little bit more in terms of the character of the piece or different characters. Um, so in this first, and the other thing I want to say too is that, um, you know, this this is a tricky one. It's and you you play it so well already. I think you can maybe get zoom in a little bit more on the intonation like i found that working on it i just have to like take a microscope to everything and and really think about like the connection between my left hand and my right hand coordination um, there is a lot of give and take, I think, even in this movement where you're kind of, you know, these suspensions are happening, right? Like moving from the A string to the D string to the G string. And they're kind of, they, you know, the function of them relies on micro movements. So, you know, slight torso moving around or the bow just going up and down. And sometimes the left, sometimes like staying on one you know, moving as a passing tone coming off that A string note and, you know, making a smooth transition to the chord that's the D and G string or the A and D string. You understand what I mean? Yes. Um, so every once in a while, instead of just kind of block shifting, you do a little bit of a... of a slip, um, and, and there's simplicity to it, you know, kind of just like. It's a, for me, it's very hymn-like, you know what I mean? So in the midst of doing all this awkward stuff, that's no fun for anyone, right? That like fits with your fourth finger and you know, that's kind of uh, noodly. I think in your brain you have to be really thinking of that melody and also thinking of, of to alleviate the tension that is there naturally. So naturally, I, my inclination is to kind of squeeze, right? Because it's like... Or, or vibrate. You, you were actually. I enjoyed that you didn't have too much vibrato on some of these intervals. Like you really just allowed them to be what they are, and I, I, I applaud that. I think that's really gorgeous. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that I was gonna say. I also thought that you were taking, you were breathing in between phrases so nicely, and I think you can kind of do more of that. Um, you know, allowing these fermatas to be a kind of uh, maybe posing a question 
um, or maybe just just allowing yourself and us, your audience, like to to rest, you know, for a moment before we digest um, the next piece, especially af at the right before the tranquilo, like the. <laughs> Because then it really it changes. It goes to like a, a much lower and darker um, material. Um, and then I, I I would love if you could make a, a real huge deal of <laughs> when you're returning to that theme. I, I thought you blew a little bit quickly through it, um, and but that's that's a, you know it brings us home in a way. So why don't we try that again, and just kind of with all that in mind, and try well, with all that in mind, and trying to imagine yourself playing maybe like two different people in this context, okay? Beautiful. That's so much better. I feel, you know, that's the thing. I know what it is to be performing, and all rests and silences feel like an eternity, right? Like time is this totally different thing. Um, and then when you take that space, it feels like it's a long amount of time, but it really isn't. So that actually, that really breathed um, for me. The one thing I was going to also mention is before the crescendo et ademando, um, you know, this is such a gorgeous interval, this like... And then of course the release is like... Ah, oh, like, oh, that feels so good, right? So yeah. if, you, and if you come across anything like that, and I feel like there's a lot of that in Britain's music, really he like lean into those dissonances uh, you know again like allow keep us with you and um hold us in that tension with you and you know sometimes that means even just staying on it a little longer or like pushing a little bit more i could i could use a little more of of like the bow towards the bridge you know what i mean and just varying the the sound um and then this payoff of like the GC, you know what I mean, um, is is just really uh, kind of a special moment. So could you just try from the? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Push, push your bow even closer. Like, I mean, oh, right, yeah. like the thing is, like, all throughout grad school for me, my teacher would just constantly be telling me that I had to vibrate more and I had to play at the bridge. And at a certain yeah. point, I really, I was not listening. And I, because I was afraid of basically making all sorts of nasty sounds, now I make nasty sounds for a living, so it's great. But, <laughs> you know, don't be afraid to see what's too much. I think in like, you can, it, you might crack the sound, you know what I mean? It might squeak, something might happen. doesn't matter because then you just know, all right, that's like slightly past the, the sweet spot, you know what I mean? Um, everybody, every instrument, right, every cello has that kind of, sweet spot between the fingerboard and the bridge where you feel and 
I think that's why I like this music so much is that there's a lot of like dense kind of sinewy writing where you feel that that tension and that res uh, what's the word like um, the, the response of the instrument that's kind of like pushing at you so that you feel like you have that support does it you know what I'm talking about like yeah, if we're too yeah. close to the fingerboard sometimes it feels like we're skating and then if we're too close to the bridge maybe it feels like we're forcing but somewhere in the middle is this really juicy like taffy pulling thing where you get the resistance that you want against your bow hand um, so yeah let's go from the same place one more time and really just like lean into that um, A right. and B flat right. is that you kind of slowed down that shift going in. I think that, you know, I, our first instinct is kind of like, I got to get to that. I got to get from here all the way up here. Um, and we, but I don't hear those shifts, but you, but feeling those shifts is really important. Like you have time. Um, so what for time's sake? I mean, I could spend I could spend an hour on this movement with you, but let's. Why don't we just move um, to the to the fuga for a moment? Um, and we probably won't go through all of it, but we'll the first page or so, and, and I'll give you a couple. Um, well, actually, I can I can talk to you right now about it. So again, character is important, right? There's a little bit of for my taste, there's a little bit of like flirtation, mysteriousness to this. It's playful, um, but it's there are moments where it also feels kind of reserved and held back. Um, so this is like like come hither. This like but these responses like. get to this with the dotted eights and, and 30 seconds think more connected from each um, you know fragment to that each half bar to the next so that you're making a longer arc of a phrase right. um, and sometimes that means pushing through the dotted eights rather than just like dum beat a bum beat a bum but like really feeling <laughs> Again, it's like I'm really, I'm kind of leaning into the string a lot, and I'm even using some left hand articulation. If um, uh, I'm not playing triplets, but I would say like you don't want those 30 seconds to get swallowed, right? So sometimes we we like slow them down a little bit just so that you can hear because the response time is a little bit later. Um, yeah, the big thing is just kind of the character. I think there's like dual forces at play here. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is rhythm. I, I think that, um, you know, in, in several instances, he's kind of making an accelerando uh, with the rhythm, right? He's not writing a cell, but he's saying, I'm going from eighth notes to a triplet, right? And so rather than hearing, which is correct, um, I wonder if you can try to bleed those rhythms into each other so that the eighth notes are, we don't know when an eighth note becomes part of a triplet and the triplet part of the next, right? So you're just kind of moving um, through, through the rhythm. Um, and same thing later on, you have like some of the quintuplets, you know, coming from, from 16th notes. Um, a lot of times, and you didn't do this, but a lot of times we see things like that and we tend to either like, oh gosh, it's five, I better play faster. Oh, it's two, I better play slower, right? But actually these rhythms tend to be much closer to each other, to, you know, their value is much closer than we think. 
Um, and so, so kind of like really, uh, you know, subdividing within yourself. And when you get to, uh, this was a little harder to hear just because Zoom, the audio like sometimes drops out a little bit when you, when you play softer. But I, I think that I, I would love to, to hear a little bit of that, uh, again, like leaning in with the bow a little bit more, like a little more flat hair, a little co like more core to the sound. Um, I, I couldn't quite tell, like, are you playing more on the fingerboard or were you? Uh, like at the beginning, for example? Or just no, uh, and I don't have bar numbers, I'm sorry, but like when the stuff starts, they... <laughs> That stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking like airy there. V so very like, what? Uh, Sorry, say that uh, again. More airy. More airy. Okay. All right. Um, will you in will you indulge me and play yeah, play a little a little bit like a little more m maybe flatter hair I guess. But let's yeah, let's back sure. up for now and just just start at the beginning. for a second yeah that's really good um, I think you know I think <clears throat> with the eighth notes so sometimes you rush through them a little bit um, which doesn't seem intentional uh, and I, I get it because like there in some ways there's no you've lost the direction right you've spent all this time ascending you know to <laughs> and then it's like okay but don't be afraid to kind of really like be heavy and and hang out in that so that we can feel again it's like a resistance to the melody that's moving forward right it's this other it's the stubborn character who's like no no i'm staying right here and this is the tempo and don't don't you go away from it right now um so so don't be afraid and if you do want to move or if there isn't a cello rondo then you know make it very obvious and kind of purposeful. Um, and the other thing is these eighth notes, they're not all created equal. I know on the page um, they all have carrots, they all look uh, the same, but in reality they're not depending on where, you know, where in the piece and also where dynamically you're, you are lying. Um, so what I, and again, I think this is also a little bit of the audio quality, so, but I hear a more light approach like this. Which is gorgeous, and I think in the beginning that's wonderful. Later on, I think l you can play around with lengthening the notes a little bit, still still having that bite, you know. Um, have a couple different uh, things in your arsenal. You know what I mean? Like I always say, this is like we have to have five different kinds of vibrato or, or maybe eight different kinds of vibrato at our disposal, right, that you can use. Uh, you have to have like a, a dozen different bow, you know, where, first of all it's like a choice of where do I play between the fingerboard and the bridge. Do I start from the string? Do I come from above the string? How long is this accented note? How short is this accented note? Where am I scooping? You know, or am I doing something like more with the fingers and like with more of a bite. And so having a lot of those different sounds um, 
you know, in your, in your artillery, I think, is really important. Then you can kind of, you have command over them, and then you can execute them as you like, and even being a bit spontaneous, I think, in performance. Um, so vary that, you know, the length of these notes a little bit. And um, again, I think when you kind of climb to the top of that phrase, uh, you still need to push a little bit more to the bridge so that we really, um, that we really feel it. You know, that's gonna. I think doing more here is going to just increase your envelope of dynamics. You know what I mean? This. Slowing down the bow, right? Like so, I'm not I'm not using a lot of bow up there. I'm actually it's very concentrated, um, and that goes for the droney stuff too. This like <laughs> you know, you need a little bit of that um, towards the bridge sound. I think because it's such a like we have this muddy register, right? It's Alto Perso, you say, it's a miserable instrument. Um, <laughs> and I didn't quite think it was miserable, but I have to say, yes, it's tough at times like this, this G string, D string area doesn't speak, it's not as punchy as the A or the C. And so we have to sometimes compensate with pla bow placement, left hand articulation, um, kind of going a little bit overboard. So let's just move on for now because we only have a couple more minutes. Um, can you start where the 16th note stuff, uh, where, just where you left off there? And it was here that you wanted flatter bow? Yeah. 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 You know what, first, can you do it the way that you were doing it? sounds really good. I think that there are moments where that really works and then other moments where I kind of want a little bit more of a needly sound. Mm -hmm. um, I, li I like the character of a more, you know, a flautando or lighter, but then there's something a little bit um, grating about this section to me, right? Like it's, it's, it's wormy, it's squirmy, it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's winding. You know what I mean? And, and there are some dissonances where I feel like I just want a little more edge to the sound. Um, because it's too, easy, it's too easy if everything is just very beautiful and floaty, like, ah. Like, that's gorgeous, that's gorgeous. But like, we can't, you know, sometimes we have to be very Rostropovich about it. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen those recordings, but he just basically like pounds everything. Right. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, I would, again, like, have a couple different moments where the phrases peak, um, or where you feel like it's a little more intense, uh, that you might change that stroke a little bit and add a little more, uh, core to the sound. And, and again, with this rhythm thing, if there can be a little more connection, uh... <laughs> Um, that I don't feel so much right now. There's a break a little bit, like do 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 da 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 da. I you know something about quintuplets or septuplets or whatever you know kind of odd numbered tuplet puts us off balance. It doesn't feel so vertical or square, 
And I think that's very purposeful in this music. It's like suddenly we lose the beat a little bit, um, and it's just this like flowy thing. Um, it's just something that's like growing and building towards that C. And then you go back to, right? So can you just try once, um, maybe from somewhere slight, slightly before that, I guess, uh, after the after the C major chord? Questions or I wish we had more time. That I'm sense. sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I think everything's pretty clear. Yeah, I think you sound great. I can't wait to hear you in person or <laughs> in any. Hopefully you know. someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you but, so much for your comments. No, thank you. Thank you for playing. Yeah, bravo. Virtual thank clap. You. Virtual clap. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. 
Yes. Yeah, that was excellent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I don't have too much to say, actually. Um, I think you've you've totally got the spirit of this piece, uh, and it sounds beautiful. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I would like to ask you a, a, the question of what do you think of or what's the imagery or the the feeling um when you're playing this piece yeah so um i think the one thing that i'm really thinking about is light in this piece and i'm sort of imagining like a like a car driving down this road and it's really foggy out and like sort of misty and rainy and like each line is sort of like the the headlights coming closer and then farther away um and then sort of like playing with like the timbre as like the mist and the fog and the rain and all like that sort of thing. I love that. I love that. Okay. So, so yeah, I think, um, well, on the tech, on the technical side of things, and again, like this is a little bit of zoom quality, I'm sure, but, um, even though her instructions are so specific, I think largely this piece is improvisatory, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, think that you can play now you can take it to that next level playing around and maybe you've done this a little bit but um do you do you have a microphone or have you ever played amplified before um i played amplified before yeah mm. so right now a lot of us like don't have that at our fingertips but mm. i think this is a great piece to even if you don't perform it amplified um to hear it amplified mm. because what happens is like you start hearing all those overtones much more um they're much more present um and even in practicing you know forgetting the microphone i think what's kind of fun and when i place pieces like this i like to see how much control i can get over the overtones that are actually ringing mm -hmm. so if i'm i don't even know if i can do it right now but like what's a good example of this um you can kind of hear a da, 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 you know what I mean sometimes something and you get to that point it's all about the right hand placement and mm -hmm. how you know playing around also with like how much hair you yeah. use on the string um, to to start to see which ones you can get to ring so that they're almost ringing like a drone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's gonna be really fun for you to just kind of jam out and, you know, as a meditation of like, how, how much control can I get over the overtones that are popping out? Mm -hmm. um, not just thinking of it as like soltasto, ponticello, and like the, the, you know, going from one to the next. And I loved that you were going way up on the fingerboard you get that node kind of sound. Have you watched any of Anne's, um, Andrew Norman? Yeah, I watched uh, some of this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've played a lot of Andrew's music before and that, that was like a, a wealth of techniques and extended techniques that kind of, um, you know, improved my playing a lot. Uh, just like knowing that I could do that. Some strings, I can't quite do that. But there's one he wrote, you have this very hollow, Right sound like way up at the node, almost, mm -hmm. almost at the halfway point. Um, again, like that's something to play around with. Like, what are the different sounds? And as you went way up at the end. I think you can you can experiment. You know, on in those soltasto, like how much soltasto, what are um, 
And maybe, I mean, have, have you kind of thought of, again, like, I can't hear you, you know, but not being able to hear you only through a computer is a little bit tough. I can't, I can't get all of the detail, but do you feel like you've also thought about some of that in, in the practicing of this? Yeah, I think at first, like, my instinct was to go through and sort of, like, map out where to, like, do the different bow placements, but I think it gets too square sometimes, so for this performance, I didn't do that. I just kind of, like, improvised where the placements are. Which is great, yeah. So, and how long have you uh, worked on it, or is it new for you, or you've... you've... Uh, yeah, it's a little new, maybe, like, two, two and a half-ish weeks Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a brand new piece. Well, that's great. It's at the start of its, of its life with you. Um, in, so the, other, the last thing, technically speaking, is, again, like hair placement and really, especially when you have like sex tuplets, um, really, I, I sometimes think like a more flat hair uh, and slightly more pressure on the string can give that really sparkly uh, quality to it. And you really hear almost like little bullets like da -ka -da -da -ka -da. you know mm -hmm. what I mean so play again like play between a more muffled sex tablet like this <laughs> and I think in the ponticello sections don't be afraid of a little bit of of, of crustiness or a little bit of harshness mm -hmm. um, you know like show us this is a beautiful piece but it's also very organic and very earthly. Mm -hmm. um, I, did you, have you watched, there's, there's a, a video that I watched of a cellist doing this piece um, where he's actually outside. Oh yeah. And yep. they've, re they've recorded it in such a way that it, it doesn't sound like you, like, you know, usually you get a mic outside and it just sounds like someone's hitting it and it, it's awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, they've, they've recorded nature in a very beautiful way in this instance where you hear the wind kind of blowing and the, the leaves rustling. Um, you know, all, all this, this, um, these sounds that, that are, are imitating nature, I think. Um, and in the, you know, the Papillon piece, which we're going to hear next, it's like the flapping of a butterfly's wings, mm -hmm. right? There's making your audience feel those things. And I think you can do that um, well, anyway, that was a long-winded way of coming home to say that I think some, you know, part of what's organic and, and what is life is, is like the dirt, you know what I mean, and the, the, the not pretty. Uh, and I feel like in a lot of my music making, I think about that. I think about not being afraid to make those kinds of sounds um, and to stay on them and to like make my audience kind of sit in that discomfort um, so that when there's a moment of release um, or there's silence, like especially at the end of this, like you have a wall of sound for, for four or five minutes and then you have this like gorgeous soft ending and then you have silence and that is like a resolution and, and a release as well mm. um, where you can just stay there and keep your audience there for as long as you, as you like. Um, so yeah, and then that brings me, I guess, to the more musical side, which is that without being untrue to, you know, what you feel and, and how you feel performing, like I, I, I don't want to encourage any over, move, like moving more or doing something amplified if it doesn't feel organic to you, but I, f I kept feeling like I wanted, um, I wanted a little more intensity from from you visually I think like I, I heard it and and I but I was think I'm like what is she thinking what is she how, how is she feeling in this moment and I, I sort of just wish I could like reach into the screen and into where you are and like pull pull like your personnel your personality out a little bit you know or a little bit more to the forefront um, and again it's hard we're in this new world of computers and what is live performance on a computer screen without actual bodies in the room it's not the same energy it's I, d I don't I've performed a couple times it does not feel the same performing mm -hmm. right as I do when I have that adrenaline going and I have like people right in front of me and and there's like you know you can hear everyone it's totally different right so how do we how do we recreate that 
And something, I think what I was pulled in with you is that I, I felt like I, I was in this like beautiful stillness um, and, and a quietness with you, but somehow I, I wanted to, to be more connected. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but I, or I wanted you to, to lead me and show me a little bit more with your, your body language and your connection to your instruments, especially with the singing, because that is directly from your body, right? Do you, have, you, have you sung and played before? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, cool. You have a lovely voice. Um, <clears throat> so this is actually from, you know, this is your body's instrument. We all have a singing voice or we try to sing it's it's also very organic and you're singing it perfectly and you're doing all the syllables and it's perfectly in tune um, now find find a, a, a deeper connection to it mm -hmm. I think um, find more emotion in it um, it's more there in the playing than I think it is the, the vocal mm -hmm. um, be more emphatic, I think, with the humming, the mmm, you know, something about when we hum, right, or we, or we close our mouths to sing, mm -hmm. what do you feel? You feel a vibration, mm -hmm. right? You hear mmm, like an ohm. Have you ever taken a yoga class and they make you do yeah. an ohm? <laughs> yeah, but it feels great because you take this huge breath and then you slowly release it and you kind of, everybody's vibrating at the same frequency. And I think that's what this is. This is like, imagine you're in that yoga class and there's, uh, or like Pauline Ol Oliveros, I don't know if you've ever heard any of her music or done any of those exercises. Everyone is vibrating, right? And imagine you had a choir of people supporting you and you weren't feeling shy at all about having to like sing and play at the same time in front of an audience. <laughs> But you really let it go, and I think in the you know in the comfort of your own home, especially, like play around with like a real forte, mm -hmm. and a real piano, and it, at real piano like singing. I'm an untrained singer. Your voice is gonna crack. If you're nervous, the vibrato is gonna go out of control. Straight tone is the hardest thing to sing. Mm -hmm. At a forte, like we, I remember I. I didn't even think I could sing in a chest voice above like a, a G, this G. Um, and then I took some, some raga lessons with Michael Harrison, who's a mm -hmm. composer. And you're, you're not allowed to sing in a head voice. You don't get to sing, ah, You have to go like, ah, You know, this big like belly, diaphragm, chest, you know, back of the, back of the head, back of the throat. I probably don't know what I'm talking about. Anyone who's a, a natural singer is probably like, no, no. <laughs> um, but it's something deep, you know, within you and not being afraid to kind of let that go. And all of a sudden I was able to push my range. So use this as an excuse to kind of practice your vocal chops and like really connecting this technical or physical thing to an emotional one. Um, so that so that we can feel that I mean that's that's I think my biggest thing as a performer um, and what I've spent a lot of time thinking about and doing over the years is like how do I how do I show people who I am not just like the music I'm playing or what the composer wrote um, not just playing perfectly how do I actually translate my personality my feelings my desires, my, the, the causes I stand by, you know, how intensely I'm feeling. And I'm sure we've all had this, like, where you've had to perform when you don't feel like performing. Um, mm -hmm. You might feel very flat one day. You might feel intensely upset after a breakup or something. Um, and how do we channel all of those different kinds of energies? Um, how do you tap into it, first of all, in yourself? while playing an instrument mm -hmm. um, and then how do we how do we translate this in a very organic natural way mm -hmm. to the people who are are watching us um, and and i think most of the time i think i'm overdoing it or or um somehow it's not enough or you know there i have all these doubts um but really it's when I feel I'm the most successful at it is like when I'm, I'm the deepest in my head and in my heart, like while I'm playing, I'm so in the moment and in the minute of that piece 
and not thinking about anything else. And I'm allowing all of those emotions um, and, and ang anger or frustration or whatever to, I'm allowing it all to come to the surface. Um, and I think, I don't know if you feel that way, like when you perform or, mm. or I mean, this is like a larger discussion, I think, that we could, we could have with everybody, um, you know, what it feels like to do what we do and to have to, to have to have it on command, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like kind of a, a funny thing to think about. Um, but we do have to have it on command in a way, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think, I think the most, you know, one of the coolest things about doing what we do is, is the ability and the platform to be vulnerable for, um, you know, it's not just your friend or your family or your dog, but it's like sometimes for a hundred people or a thousand people and, and really just saying, yeah, this is me and I'm going through this and, and this is how I feel and no makeup, no frills, you know, no bullshit. It's just like, it's all there. And I think that's something it's like, it can take a lifetime to, to sort of get at that. But I, I do, I think a lot about that. And I'm thinking about that now because I watched you play this piece mm -hmm. and you played it so well, you know what I mean? So it, it makes me feel something and I, and I want more of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I don't have much more to say on this. I mean, do you want to try, I think, yeah, we have a few minutes. Um, first of all, do you have any questions about anything, not just this piece, but, about, you know, like anything at the, at, you know, on your mind or? Um, I don't think so. Everything you said has been really helpful and insightful, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> right, so why don't we try, let's just go, um, let's go from like the, the three quarters of the way kind of maybe three staves um, from the bottom before the humming starts mm -hmm. and see if you can kind of incorporate you know I know I threw a lot at you but for one second yeah. yeah that's better I think so these F's right like that's the kind of it's it's a it's a tense overtone within this series right mm -hmm. so it's kind of 
It's like really cutting in the midst of, of these other resonances, like. And I think you, uh, you can work on to, again, with the ohm, back to the ohm thing. Yeah. It's a really slow release of air. Mm -hmm. Right, you you go as slow as you can and hold the note as long as you can. Play around with different lengths because I I feel you're doing it a lot the same. There's like a, nah, mm. ah. really really practice and see how long can I get because there's no time limit on this. You can just be hanging out like. <laughs> Sing or anything, but like, <laughs> also like change the shape of your mouth. Like, go from O oh to Ah to to N to Hat. Like, you can do a little bit close, like a and then lips all the way close. Do a more back of the throat nasally. Play around. I'm gonna send some links too as like some inspiration um, at the end of this, but. Like room full of teeth. You guys know that. You know that ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a great example. Like they're doing all sorts of different things vocally, and they've worked with a lot of different people um, on on different you know vocal techniques. So it, play play around I, and see if you can get different uh, sounds. Change it within the sound. You know what I mean, that's another. That's the same thing as like this world of of soltasto between soltasto and solpont. It's the same thing with your voice. You have endless possibilities here. Um, so you can really experiment and improvise, I think, even, even blindly. Even if you have never taken a voice lesson in your life and you don't know anything, we all sing. We sing in the shower. We sing to the radio. You know, we hum. I, I would urge you to, to make, the ugly sound, make the ugliest sounds you can also with your voice, you know what I mean, so that you know what the what the range is mm. uh, there. And yeah, let's just, uh, let's finish that up. So, so just pick it up somewhere in, the, in that last two, second, second to last stave. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, that was it. That's great. So keep playing with that. I have two little last little things to say. Um, so one is that, and you kind of made me think of this, um, something I use uh, sometimes like when playing quiet, it can be, it can be difficult to, to start a note from nothing and, mm -hmm. and also to fade out. That was a gorgeous fade out. Um, occasionally, you know, I'll even just keep going Air, air bowing. I know that's a really weird thing, but I, I somehow feel like it helps me sometimes just to like, I, I spent a lot of time when, in my younger years and like in school, just kind of obsessing about like, oh, but the bow's got to be on the string. Like I got to get to the tip and like, and it's got to be even, you know, this like perfection. But, but what if we didn't think of those things and, and this like, 
What if I just rode right off the bridge? You know, what if I just wore up the fingerboard, same thing, like, I'm literally playing with like one hair on my bow right now. And then I mute the strings with my left hand and you just hear like an air sound. You can also play around with that kind of like atmospheric. I don't know if you can even hear that right now, but like, no pitch, you know what I mean? Have that in your arsenal as well. Um, and the other, th the only other thing is that the temp, the tempo is great. And I know she says, um, you know, the pulse stays constant, which you're doing a great job of. I would say you can take some liberty with that. Mm -hmm. I think that at peaks where it's more intense or there's like upward motion, you might want to ramp, you can ramp up the tempo a little bit if you mm -hmm. felt moved to do so. Mm -hmm. I think you can, the opposite of that, like descending um, or coming towards the end, I think you can you can slow it down, you know, within reason. But again, it's like, it's not a tempo thing. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's like the feeling of like, am, I'm relaxing. I'm alleviating. I'm, I'm falling back on the beat. Mm -hmm. And then I might be on the beat. And then I might be slightly on top of the beat. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those, it's, it's, it's great to be a master of time and space. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, playing with us a little bit, because then we can say, well, gosh, she stayed in the same tempo, but like, I felt, I felt pushed and pulled with her. You know what I mean? That's, that's important. And I think, and within that as well, it doesn't always have to be even sex tuplets or even, um, fours. That's all well and good. But I think occasionally, like when there's a harmonic change, you can exaggerate a top note or exaggerate a bottom note. Right, so maybe I'm like, so then if it happens in like at some very pivotal moments or special spots, you pick those, right? You don't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, that just that gives more envelope, you know what I mean? You have more to play with and like more more colors on your palette um, and the same with the upper notes the and then when i don't do it it's kind of like ooh, ooh yeah she's she's like slick <laughs> you know like you kind of you hang out and then and then i might choose like not to do it for another you know two minutes or something but uh, don't, but yeah, don't be afraid to like play around with, with the lengths of notes and like the pulse slightly. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Sounds beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're going to play one, two, four. Is that right? Yes. Of, of the Pakion. Um, great. Let's hear it.
Yeah, bravo. <laughs> Yay. Oh my God, so good. You're so brave. I avoided this piece for so long. Like, I still haven't learned it. And I was looking at it today, I was like, maybe I'm ready to play this piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. It's hard yeah. um, and awkward. <laughs> I mean, just the, the idea of like, this big clunky instrument, right? And like, we have to just sound like an effortless little butterfly. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> but no, you play it so well. And um, yeah, I think, and these are a lot of just my thoughts about like the piece, not not how you know, you're, you're playing it. But my, my feeling is that as a cellist, like, and doing this kind of music where it is, it is a lot gestural, right um and i feel like you were you were taking the time for, first of all how long have you worked on this piece um a couple um not so long not so long <laughs> so it's new it's like relatively new then. kind of yes yeah um so yeah i think the next step is kind of making this look and feel more effortless um and what i th think is really great is that you are taking your time and you're really going through the motions and the hinges you know what I mean and I you're not leaving any corner sort of um, uncleaned you know what I mean like it's the attention to detail in this kind of piece in any piece but it's specifically this kind of a piece is really important um, and when you do that which you are then I think later on it becomes easy to kind of just be off the cuff with it um, so having done that work and while you're doing that work, that's wonderful. I think in performance and the ultimate goal at the end of, of uh, something like this is that you really have to make it your own because it's, but there's some really awkward left hand stuff in this. I mean, there's some awkward right hand stuff, but specifically the left hand and I, I have very small hands. I don't know about you. But there's there's some big stretches and, and like string crossings that are just not idiomatic to cello playing, um, and so the important thing is not being afraid to like find your own route and find your own way of making things sound, and keeping in mind that in the end, the, it doesn't have it's not about the perfection. It's not about hitting every note. You're not going to make every harmonic speak. Um, the way you know that it's written there there's a lot that's unstable about making these kinds of sounds um, and one has to embrace that instability uh, it's really it's important to kind of let it be what it wants to be in the moment um, and that's what kind of makes it magical as well um, so you know when you're performing it like don't slow down just okay because this is harder and I slow down a little bit or like I want to be very careful don't worry about that stuff worry about that when you're practicing but if you're giving a performance just let it go you've done all the work and you've done the work up to the point where you have to perform it and what I always say about how I feel about new music and now all music is that this this is all a long journey you know when when I was in school and and I remember what it was like, like everything is building for several months towards a student recital or, you know, a degree recital and you work so hard on this repertoire and then you get like one chance, you have one performance, you know, where it's all got to be there. Um, but life is totally different. Like you're going to play this piece dozens of times. Um, you're going to have a long journey with it. Like you, you, I played some movements, I remember, for like a dramatic uh, production and I didn't learn the whole thing and then I've kind of like come back at it you know what I mean over the years and then I was like oh wow I wasn't able to do that three years ago you know it will evolve as you evolve as a music as a musician and cellist um, so what I'm saying is make it your own don't be afraid of of the instability and the things that you know might go wrong or or sound differently than you expect them to um, I love I loved your like crunchy bow and like that you really weren't afraid to get that sound. I think you can exaggerate even more. To, um, I think you can take multiple bows even on some of those longer held notes. Um, you know, for example, in four, 
like in measure 24, this like. If you want to hang out on it longer, take two bows. If you want one bow, the one thing that I noticed with the pont stuff and like the, the scratchy bow is that I think you, you can think more about a slow bow. Um, because I, you've got the fast thing down and you'll need that too, but don't forget that you have this like. You know, this really, I don't, sometimes I just claw, I like claw bow. And the That used to be, that was an exercise early on that my teacher gave me. He said, if you can just like hang out on each of the open strings, play totally at the bridge. What is the slowest? I'm still, I'm not even halfway through the bow. Um, what's the slowest you can pull? Without the, set, without the bow like cracking or stopping, right? And then when you get to this kind of music, it's okay if it cracks or stops, like that might happen too, and that's kind of part of it. But think about those sounds with a slower bow, um, because, but it, it is different, like even this kind of, like a half pressure and a... That's a sound, right? Um, so there's a lot within, I think, what you're doing. Um, you know, same thing with, you know, the, the vertical travel, like, between the fingerboard. And I, I loved uh, how you were getting from one place to the next. I think sometimes you can slow those transitions down. Don't worry about, you know, if I'm going... You know, take your time m moving from here to here. See, show me what's in that middle range, you know, like, and, and sometimes you have to slow things down so that your audience, too, can, like, can really hear, you know, that there are things that one can miss in a piece like this because it's all happening rather quickly and, and, and it's, there are some stranger sounds, you know, to, to the ear. Um, so that's kind of what I have to say about the like the more extended technique. The trills were gorgeous. I mean, he's like, uh, I find that so difficult to go thumb. I mean, crazy. Like, I'm not that coordinated. So I thought that was really brilliant, um, and and very graceful what you did. And then these sextuplets, you know, like just kind of like flow through them, like, um, let them be as, as effortless as you, as you can. Um, I'm going to have you do some of this. I just had a question. There was one spot, um, you know, this, this second movement, this, um, I thought it was really excellent. At the end, I was playing around with something earlier, and I don't know if you were doing this too, but this, I'm kind of doing like a, what was I doing? Are you doing like a hooked first, I hook my first finger? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then I use four to kind of, and then I was playing around with just actually using like my palm. Were I, were you doing that too, to play uh, the top to play the top A, so that I don't have to move? Yes, oh, lower side of the thumb. Of the thumb. Okay, so so in where is that? Is that like eighteen? Um, it appears um, in just for, five. Measure five. Oh, I was thinking towards towards the end. Towards oh. the end, though. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. At at eighteen. Uh, I just put my pinky in the middle of, of both strings. Right, but then on the top for the for the yeah the A on the A string. So you do you do. So that, 
third finger for the the other extension, and I use the pinky to press the A. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So you got it then. I so you use the third finger on this mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's even. You're better than I am. Cool. I just I guess I felt like this was really comfortable to kind of. Um, And I'm I'm playing almost with the back the back side of my not towards the thumb but towards the pinky like that part of my palm. Anyway, you can just play around with that. I mean, whatever is comfortable. But finding that was something I've never played a note with with this part of my hand before. Those kinds of things. Do what you need to do. You know, to make it to make it sound. I think also in general in this movement. And anything with a string crossing, especially in four with the like, um, more towards the bridge is going to give you more control rhythmically. Um, I think sometimes it can get a little skaty and uneven. Um, and I, I think it probably needs to be slightly faster. I want to just click out the food <coughs> volume. Yeah, maybe maybe a little faster than you were doing it, but but tr experiment with with uh, more towards the bridge. I think harmonics also will sound like sparklier. They'll speak better. Um, and you're using the left hand like to kind of pluck those open strings. Um, so it's it's seemingly easy. I remember this playing this. And thinking, oh, it's great. It's slow, and it's just like eight notes, and it's all in my, you know, fourth and first position. But it got to be really hard because I couldn't get those string crossings even. And so I think, why don't we just try? We'll work backwards, maybe. Um, why don't you just try right there at twelve? <laughs> You could even practice this like Ponticello just to prove, like, exa sort of exaggerate it um, and, then, and then bring it back from there. The other thing is don't, I would almost never lift the bow because this is, this is a section where I feel like it's calling you to be a different instrument than you are. Um, I hear a little bit of like retaking or if there's a string crossing, like sometimes you come out of the string. I think... Oh. Imagine you're more of like a wind player. Um, again, it's like this slow release of breath over a long period of time because this, the mood of this is very still, right? Like it's very, a very still lake. Or I think of like, like almost when you're in the airplane and you're, go, you're descending through the clouds. It's like this slow motion, t time and space. We don't know how fast we're moving. We don't know how high we are. Like, we don't know where we are. You're in this kind of suspended animation. Um, and to get to that place sonically, I think you have, to, you have to feel it in your body and you have to translate that to your instrument. And so part of it is the bow, but it's also just, it's, it's imagining you don't have the string crossing. And, and the difficulty lies also, right, in the, like, it plays tricks on your brain because some of the, right, the way, like, how the harmonics, where they are on the string in relation and how it sounds, it's, like, backwards. So I would, oh, no, no, I wasn't, you know, like, I, I need to be on this string, not that string. Um, so just kind of getting over that hump of, of the, the mental awkwardness of this. <laughs> I, I feel like physically if I can describe how I feel when I'm doing this I actually I come out of my chair just a little like I'm sorry to, not to be harsh but like like I'm tightening my butt like <laughs> I can feel these muscles and I'm like coming out of my seat 
as if I could just float away. I feel my, I'm not pinching or anything like that, but I'm almost with both arms, like becoming a little lighter. Um, yeah, I'm coming out of myself. And so I'm, I'm like more on um, hovering above the cello. <laughs> particular attention to this like even if there's a bow change act like there's not it's like you know it's a, I think part of a big part of struggling with the cello and any string instrument is this kind getting like a smooth bow change um, and especially when you're string crossing so just kind of, you know, imagine it's very caramely and sticky and you never come out of the string. Um, can we try it? Let's try it one more time. And I really don't care what notes you play. Don't worry about like, like a fingering or something. I just want you to play really steady 16th notes um, and as, as suspended as you can. think you got to be more flat hair and a little closer to the bridge um, but that's already much better and 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 more musical sounding I still hear a little bit of like to exaggerate like more of a there's like an attack here and sometimes it actually like delays the rhythm it didn't that time but before like this you know, that's what's great about that left hand. And I know she specifically marks the left hand pits in a lot of places, which I know you're doing, but I use that all the time in almost every piece of music I play. I use the left hand pits to like, to be my articulation when I don't want to do it in the right hand, right? Um, that's a good sort of technique uh, and trick to have. So let's move on from that for now. Um, can you just start this movement once? Just play the first three bars. Really hang out on that scratch and, and exaggerate it for me. Try a slower, slower bow. I'm gonna do this. I kind of flatten my hair to begin with when I'm ready to move. And don't rush that transition from, basically from harmonic to solid and solid to harmonic, there's a world in between. Don't skip over it, you know what I mean? Like that, that transition uh, is part of the sound. Take, take your time with it, it, you know. You know, I'm not executing it as well as you are, but I think it's the it's the struggle of like where is that harmonic oh there it is and here it is the most present right like here's the clarity then it's the moment of like yeah you know that's fine but just take your time getting from one to the other um just just because we only have a few more minutes um m working backward to the second movement i don't have much to say because you're playing it so well um I just, f I, I feel like, you know, now it's get away from your left hand. 
and and again like I, I I can see the wheels spinning in your head still um, and can't blame you <laughs> but like the next step is kind of like getting out of your head with this and getting off of the page and really feeling the groove and the pulse right because that's what's cool about this is like you start off very basic kind of like <laughs> And in, in four or in two, and then you start having like weirder do di di do di do di do di 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 you know threes fours. There's you know di do 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 where is that moment? Di do 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 oh yeah like in thirteen you have one two three four five a six right you you do six and then there's a longer right so like there's different patterns to kind of pay attention and then it's in measure fifteen the like dumb bum. One two three, one two, one two, one two three. Ba bo di ba da ba di bo do bo di bo do bo da bo di bo da. Like really feeling that underlying pulse that's happening. Um, what in sixteen? Diddle daddle, diddle daddle, diddle daddle, dun dun. Right? Da 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 bum bum. Da 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 bum bum. Da 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 dun dun. Da 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 dun dun. Right? Like there's there's this whole other groove that's happening. So that's the next step. Um, uh, with that, I mean, do you want to do you want to just try maybe like the second half of of this? Um, any honestly, wherever you'd like to start. And don't worry, don't worry too much about the left hand. Really focus on like keeping the pulse. Okay. <laughs> I think that that's a, a work in progress, but it's beautiful, right? When you can, you can all of a sudden it shifts, and I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? Doodle 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 doodle. All these polyrhythms kind of happening, and then in the first movement, this is, you know, I I only thought that it could be. Again, I I spoke earlier about like breathing more in between phrases. Um, you know, your silences, your fermati, uh, any rests, they can be more spacious. There's more room. This is a solo cello piece. I mean, that's the beauty of solo pieces is that there's no timekeeper, there's no conductor, there's no, and it's great to play in time, and I practice everything with a metronome first, but then you get some freedom here, and especially this, this is, more, this is the beginning of the piece, it's really setting the mood, setting the stage. It's, you know, the snow is melted, spring is just kind of, you know, coming into view, kind of like where we're at now. You know, the buds are just coming out, the butterfly, it's like, okay, you know, like it's, it's searching kind of, and I think it needs that, that ethos and that mood a little bit more. Uh, it felt, you know, how you were playing it felt very correct and very matter of fact. Um, I think now play around with time, you know, you can, you can hang on to those ponts more, uh, you know, again, like this. I mean, you did it expertly, uh, but again, the journey, this piece is all about like the journey from one note to a next the journey from one phrase to the next, or one fragment of a phrase to the next. And I think you can enjoy the transitions as much as you enjoy the success of like hitting the notes, which you do. <laughs> um, and just at the end, I just want to see you do that again, because you did it. You jumped all the way up there to the C sharp. <laughs> uh, it was really cool. Uh, yeah, I think we have a couple minutes. Why don't you, can you just play this movement one more time for me? Yes. And just really, I want you to just show me what you think is over the top and too much musically.
and that's great. And really, even come way up on the fingerboard. So yeah. We, yeah, because um, otherwise I can't play the third and the first string without touching. Yeah, yeah. I would say even exaggerate even more. Of the what is it? I, you can lean into the lower one because that's kind of the, the special addition right at the end there. So if you oh. just lean, you know, keep the first finger down. I think you're doing that. Uh, I would leave the the C sharp as a harmonic, right? Um, it says that anyway. So, but then you have and see how consistent you can get it so it's not like coming in and out of it but you're really just playing that double stop that's great your shift in 13 i just love it it's so it's so badass um, last thing i think to think about well just two things actually one is now like in this whole piece now that you've learned the notes or like when you feel you're ready i want you to start like embrace the improv improvisatory aspect, okay? So like if something does happen, if there's a mistake, if the bow like doesn't do what it's supposed to do, whatever, like, you know, things get hairy sometimes in performance. The, the thing that freed me from that terror and dread of like the mistakes that I would make uh, in performance or a memory slip or something, was that I just went with it and I improvised and I did what I had to do to like get to the next place. So whatever that is for you physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, embrace these hiccups and don't, if you add, if you end up adding four notes or you end up playing a totally different harmonic or you take, you take more time so that you can get, you know, from whatever it is, don't be afraid to do that because your audience, as long as you're convincing, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? Like playing Kaya Sariaho is not going to be in the audience and come to you after and say, you know, you played this extra note or like this wasn't right. No, she's, she's looking for like the overall musical experience. Um, so I think that's important. And the other thing is, um, you know, in the beginning, I just noticed it from the second measure into the third measure, and I'm sure this, this happens before, but sometimes we finish a phrase or a gesture, and then we're going to start a new phrase, but we kind of like come out of the music momentarily. Our, we mentally check out for a second. We physically check out for a second. Um, now, in the midst of Dvorak cello concerto or something very heated, that's probably fine because you're just, you know, you're, you're banging and like, like you're being very outgoing and brave with it. Something more gentle and delicate like this, that it requires a little bit more gentility, like going from, from one to the next, like this. I don't want an, I don't want to be a jolted from that, uh, trill, you know, if I don't have to be, sorry. I <laughs> What is it? This, like, it's the movement. I'm not catching anything. I might come out. I might stay on the string. You can make the decision. You can make the decision to come out of the string and start again. If you do that, I'm gently placing it. You know what I mean? I. Right? Like that silence and that transition is, is just as important as the notes that you played. Uh, if you're staying on the string, right? Do you, do you get what I'm saying as opposed yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like a restart. Um, and I think that, that applies to really the whole piece. So I, I think we, I've gone way over time. Thank you for you know your patience. Okay. Thank you for your beautiful playing. Bravo, everybody! Yeah. Virtually clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so weird that you can't hear everyone clap. I hate that, but but they're all clapping, and it was beautiful. And this was a joy to work with the three of you. So thank you.